Hey, Blockchain Visionaries, I'm George Levy. Welcome to my channel where we talk about blockchain, Bitcoin, and cryptocurrencies. Today, we're gonna to be talking about NFTs and why some NFTs sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars or perhaps millions of dollars and others don't. This lesson is taken from my course, NFT Fundamentals, and I hope you really enjoy it. If you're not a subscriber, I encourage you to hit subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified every single time I bring you brand new videos. I publish every single week, and every week I bring you brand new information on blockchain, Bitcoin, and cryptocurrencies. Today, we're talking NFTs. Let's do it. In this lesson, I want to talk to you about why people buy high ticket priced NFTs. By high ticket priced, I mean an NFT that has a large price, say $100,000 or several hundred thousand dollars or perhaps millions of dollars. Why would anybody spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on an NFT? In this lesson, I'm going to go into some of the details with some key examples so you can understand how NFTs have been carving their way into these high ticket prices, hundreds of thousands of dollars or perhaps millions of dollars. Let me begin with one of the examples that I've spoken to you about, which is Beeple's Every Days, The First 5,000 Days. This piece, which sold for $69 million, sold at Christie's, an auction house where typically fine art is sold. Now, an NFT made it into Christie's and that piece broke all records and sold for $69 million, making it the highest priced NFT ever sold. Now this piece actually co was composed of 5,000 art pieces because every day's was composed of every single day people created a new digital image. So the first 5,000 days incorporated the first 5,000 digital images that people created every day and compiled that piece sold for $69 million at Christie's. Now notice, this was sold at Christie's, which is an auction house, which traditionally sells fine art. So what you're seeing is that NFTs are making their way into the fine art space. And now we had an NFT selling for $69 million at Christie's. So the first item that I want to say is the target that reaches art collectors, art collectors are used to paying high prices when they value a piece. So why people buy high ticket priced NFTs, a target audience that you may be interested in looking at is art collectors. I will continue on that by pointing out that CryptoPunks, which was actually a limited edition of these CryptoPunks, nine of these CryptoPunks sold for $16.9 million at Christie's again. So what you're seeing again is that these NFTs are making their way into auction houses and they're commanding multi-million dollar pieces. Continuing to that Beeple, Beeple created a new piece that's actually a sculpture and an NFT and sold it for nearly $29 million at an auction house with Christie's again. So what we're finding is that these pieces are actually commanding very, very large ticket uh, prices and the target audience is art collectors. I will then like to go into investment and speculation. You see, not everybody is an art collector and other people buy NFTs thinking as an investment or because they're speculating that they can turn around and flip it and make a much larger profit out of it. Let me give you some key examples. I want to talk about Pudgy Penguins, which is a collection of 8,888 penguins and each one of them was truly unique. Now what's interesting about this collection is that this collection was launched and it actually sold in just 19 minutes on OpenSea. People really were interested in this piece and in 19 minutes all 8,888 pudgy penguins sold. But the story doesn't end there. From there, Alexis Ohanian, who happens to be the co-founder of Reddit and is actually married to Serena Williams, the tennis player, he actually bought a pudgy penguin and actually posted on Twitter his image of his pudgy penguin. This actually brought a lot of people a lot of attention about pudgy penguins because Alexis Ohanian is a very, very well-known and recognized personality. And from that specific place, from listing that pudgy penguin, more and more people became interested in pudgy penguins. Following that, shortly, the New York Times interviewed Alexis and he stated, I joined the Penguin NFT Club because apparently that's what we do now. And in that piece, he spoke about pudgy penguins, thereby increasing greatly the visibility into these pudgy penguins. Now, the pudgy penguins actually continued selling, and here we're looking at a pudgy penguin selling for $469,000. So what we're seeing is there was a lot of attention around these pudgy penguins, and as the more and more the, the awareness of this piece spread, 
more and more of this uh, collection actually drove higher and higher ticket prices. So much so that someone actually made a purchase and made $600,000 by flipping that pudgy penguin just because that pudgy penguin was different. It was looking the opposite way, whereas all the other pudgy penguins were looking in one direction. This one was looking the opposite way. And that was so much of a differentiator that that one piece resulted into a $600,000 profit for this person that actually purchased it and sold and flipped it. Just to put things in context, Pudgy Penguins still sells to this day. And what I'm looking at right now in early January 2022 is just looking at the statistics that in the past seven days, there's been 209 Pudgy Penguins being sold. That is, the people that already had the initial Pudgy Penguins have been reselling them. And what we're finding is that in the last seven days, there's been $747,000 worth of trading volume. And a lot of people have been selling and reselling pudgy penguins across. Now, not all 8,888 pudgy penguins actually resulted in hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales. There were many of them that did not command those prices. But there are people who are still selling the same pudgy penguins. Because when you have an NFT, you can buy an NFT and you can sell it to someone else. That's one of the beauties of an NFT. When you actually make a purchase, you own the piece and you can then turn around and sell the piece to someone else if you want to. The next one I want to talk about is the concept of status symbol. This is one of the key areas where NFTs in the high ticket price is actually commanding the most attention. And I want you to be aware of this because status symbol is one of the key areas where NFTs um, kick, kick in. So I spoke to you about Alexis Ohanian, who happens to be the co-founder of Reddit. One thing I want you to notice is that his profile picture on Twitter is actually an NFT. That's a Bored Ape Yacht Club. That specific type of NFT is very popular among celebrities. The Bored Ape Yacht Club is actually a limited collection of 10,000 Bored Ape NFTs. And these were actually purchased and have been very, very popular among celebrities. If you want to be somebody, you get a Bored Ape Yacht Club. So much so that Eminem spent around $500,000 on an NFT of a Bored Ape Yacht Club. Now, why is this so important? The same as I showed you that Alexis Ohani and his Twitter profile, his picture is actually his Bored Ape Yacht Club. If we look at Eminem, he's done the same. If you go to Twitter and you look at Eminem's uh, Twitter profile, you will find that his picture on his Twitter is actually his Bored Ape Yacht Club. This is a very big thing as it's a status symbol. Not everybody can spend $500,000 on a Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT. And as a result, Eminem could put it on his profile picture. Why? Because he bought it. Not everybody else can have that. So we continue that. Other celebrity Bored Ape owners, we have people like Jimmy Fallon. We have people like Post Malone, Snoop Dogg. All of these celebrities and many more have purchased Bored Ape Yacht Clubs. Now that we're talking about uh, Snoop Dogg, I want to talk a little bit about him because Snoop Dogg actually has a collection of NFTs worth around $17 million. Snoop Dogg is a big believer in the NFT space and has been investing heavily in NFTs. He's very, very proud. As I mentioned, the status symbol of having NFTs is a big deal, especially when you have the kind of money that a celebrity does. You want to be able to flaunt your NFTs. Well, Snoop Dogg is very, very proud of having a collection worth $17 million. Let's go one step further. Let's go to Jay-Z. And just like I showed you that Eminem put a, put a Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT uh, picture on his Twitter, well, Jay-Z instead chose to put a CryptoPunk NFT as his Twitter profile picture. This is a very, very expensive NFT that he actually purchased. And that's his profile picture on Twitter. Again, as I mentioned, it's a status symbol when you can afford spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on a collectible, which is an NFT, and then being able to flaunt it on your Twitter profile. We have Jay-Z. Now, I want to point out that Jay-Z is a big believer in NFTs, and one of the things he's also been doing is he's also been selling NFTs. In fact, his debut album sold as an NFT at Sotheby's for $139,000. Notice. In this case, again, an NFT is making it into an auction house, in this case, Sotheby's, and was sold for $139,000. So you're looking at the value of why people buy NFTs. Well, here's another NFT selling for over $100,000. Now, 
going in that same direction, I want to talk about that not everybody can be Jay-Z. Not everybody can be Post Malone. Not everybody can be Snoop Dogg. Well, investors also want to flaunt and show off that they have money. So this NFT investor, in this case I'm talking about G-Money, spent $170,000 on a CryptoPunk just so he could wear it on his Twitter profile and flaunt it. As he states it, it's like wearing a Rolex in real life. Well, you could have a Timex, you could have any watch, but in your case, if your Twitter profile picture is a crypto punk that costs $170,000, that is a true status symbol. And that's a real reason why people buy these. They just want to flaunt that they're able to have that kind of money to spend on NFTs. In this case, this is G Money, and that's the NFT that he actually purchased. It was a crypto punk avatar. And it cost around $170,000. I want to go on beyond the status symbol and talking about the fact that some of these high ticket priced NFTs support a cause. And I'll be going further into this, but let me give you some of the examples. When you're looking at raising funds for a cause, these are also very popular ways of leveraging NFTs. For example, there were several NFTs being auctioned during a benefit for St. Jude's Hospital with a goal of $200 million fundraising. These NFTs were a big piece because 100% of the proceeds would benefit St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. So what you're noticing is that NFTs are serving a positive goal in this case. They're actually being used as a way for people to buy an NFT, like an NFT or an art auction, and the funds are actually supporting a worthwhile cause. In this case, St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Now I want to give you the example of this one specific one because when we go through this piece I was actually very involved in the process because this entire NFT auction was actually done during Miami Art Week. I'm based in Miami along with Blockchain Institute of Technology and BitBasel which was the organizers of many of these different NFT events were actually very very actively involved in this auction. And I work very closely with BitBasel and Blockchain Institute of Technology works closely with BitBasel. We have been sponsors of uh, hackathons that actually focus on different developers. But BitBasel is very active in the NFT space. And this whole focus of leveraging NFTs to support worthwhile causes is a very high profile use of NFTs. And there's a lot of money that's being raised. As we spoke about, I just want to give you one example. One of the NFTs sold was Seeker by Dr. C. and Proctor, who sold, sold it for 22 Ether. It was around $100,000 at the time of the sale. So what you're noticing is that this one NFT, Seeker, sold for 22 Ether to support a worthwhile cause. Beyond that, I want to talk about the final one that I want to address in this case, which is to make a statement. When you buy a high ticket item NFT, you're basically making a statement, and you may have your reasons. One of those reasons may be, for example, Vignesh Metakovan Sundaresan, who basically bought that initial $69.3 million NFT by Beeple. Well, he turned around afterwards and said, everybody, I purchased this NFT so that you can download it for free. So in essence, what he did is he purchased this NFT and then turned around and offers it to the entire world so anybody that wants can right click and save it and view it. It's his NFT and he wanted to use his money for that. He wanted to make the statement that I can buy an NFT for $69.3 million and simply just give it away to the rest of the world. That's the statement he wanted to make. And right now, we're speaking about him. He made a true statement that really has had a historic event uh, by doing so. Beyond that, I want to talk about the first tweet that was ever made was sold by Jack Dorsey for $2.9 million. Now, what's interesting is that Jack Dorsey turned around, sold the first tweet he ever did on Twitter sold it for $2.9 million, and then donated all the money to charity. That was his goal as the creator. But let's flip over to the other side, the buyer of that NFT. And that buyer of that NFT was Sina Estavi, who was the, who's the Bridge Oracle CEO and paid the $2.9 million for that first tweet. He specifically had an idea why he wanted to do that. He wanted to make a statement. Now what's interesting is that upon him doing that specifically, immediately he was attacked by people in the community saying, why would you ever pay $2.9 million for a tweet? To which he responded, it's not just a tweet. Years later, people will realize the true value of this tweet like the Mona Lisa painting. 
he wanted to define his space in the history of NFTs. And right now we're speaking about him. By making that purchase of $2.9 million for that first tweet, he is making a statement that he believes in the power of NFTs. And as such, he has defined and carved a space in the history of NFTs. So we've spoken about all of these different reasons, art collectors, investment and speculation, status symbols, supporting a cause, making a statement. But there are many more reasons why people buy NFTs. As we complete this lesson, I want to remind you that the list that I've shown you is not a comprehensive one. And there are many more high ticket priced NFTs that have sold. However, the list I have shown you is some of the key areas may you may want to take a look at because it is a proven example of different NFTs that have sold very, very high ticket prices and may give you some ideas of what you can achieve through the use of NFTs. What I want to leave you also with is just to know that the history of NFTs and what constitutes NFTs is still being defined. So you have the opportunity to create new NFTs in areas that have never been done. And perhaps you may come up with the next high ticket priced NFT. To do that, I want to end on an example that I truly find very innovative and very original, which is Tim Berners-Lee sold the web source code for the World Wide Web and auctioned it off for $5.4 million. Now you have to understand, an NFT of source code is truly original because it isn't actually a art piece, it isn't a music piece, this is source code. And this source code was auctioned off at Sotheby's and sold for $5.4 million. If you really look at what this NFT constituted, it actually had four different items. And these items were the timestamp files of the source code, an animated video of the code being written, a letter from Sir Tim, and a digital poster of the code created by Sir Tim. Notice how this piece actually leveraged the multimedia aspects of NFT. Not only did he actually auction off the source code, he auctioned off also an animated video of the code being written, and that created a more original type of NFT. That NFT sold for $5.4 million, as I explained, and the profits were actually donated towards causes chosen by Sir Tim and his wife. So as we wrap up this lesson, I want to encourage you to continue thinking about and imagining new ways in which you can leverage NFTs. It's a whole new space with many new possibilities that are being created on a daily basis. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something in the process. I bring you brand new videos every single week, so make sure to subscribe to this channel. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, I'm George Levy. We're changing the world one blockchain at a time. See you next time.